Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at the Raspberry Pi Pico, which you can see mounted on my breadboard. Now, this is the new kit on the block since January 2021, and Raspberry Pi has come up with their own microcontroller. It's the RP2040, which you can see mounted on the Pico board. Now, this is a 32 bit dual arm Cortex M0 microcontroller, and we could clock it up to 133 megahertz. Now it has two megabytes of flash, but it's not on board the microcontroller. It's a separate IC, which you can see right here. So this is two megabytes of SPI flash. Now we could power this board with a voltage range of 1.8 volts to 5.5 volts. And it has a buck boost converter on board. So if we power it with 1.8 volts, it'll boost it up to 3.3 volts. And if we power it with 5.5 volts, it'll buck it down to 3.3 volts. So we could power this board with two or three AA batteries or a lithium-ion in 18650. Now the pin that we use to power the board with batteries is the V-SYS pin. Now to upload MicroPython into the microcontroller we hold down this button and at the same time plug in the USB connector and this will become a USB flash drive. Now all we have to do is drag and drop the MicroPython file which is a .uf2 file into the flash drive and it will automatically load it into the microcontroller and we could run MicroPython. Okay, we're looking at the data sheet of the RP2040 microcontroller regarding the internal temperature sensor. Now there is an internal temperature sensor. It's basically, it's a diode which is biased with a constant current and as the temperature changes, the voltage will change and the analog to digital converter can sense that and we could get a temperature reading. And here's the formula for the temperature and the slope is minus 1.72 millivolts per degree. That's the voltage across the diode as the temperature increases. Now it says it might need some user calibration, so it's probably not that accurate because it's it's meant to measure the internal temperature, not the ambient. But we're gonna look at this temperature sensor and we're gonna write some code. We're gonna take this temperature and we're gonna send it over a LoRa radio link to another receiver and that'll be our demo code. Okay, here's the code that I found in the book Getting Started with the Raspberry Pi Pico and it's a free download. Now this is the code to extract the temperature information out of the internal temperature sensor and display it. Now I found a problem with this, with this program. The temperature readings were way too low so there is a problem with this code so I had to do some tweaking. So we'll run this code and I'll show you the tweaks that I did and then we'll send the temperature data over the LoRa radio to another LoRa receiver. Okay here's the code running on the Pico to extract the temperature data and send it over my LoRa radio link. Now I'm using Thani. It's my IDE editor and it's a free download. And you can see at the very top I'm importing machine and new time. So machine for my pin which is my GPIO pin which is driving my LED which is on pin 25. And sleep is my new time. That's my delays. So here I'm setting pin 25 as an output. So pin 25 is the onboard LED. And here's my UART, it's UART 0, and I'm setting it to 9600 baud. And my ADC 4 is reading the voltage across the diode, which is a temperature sensor. Then I go into a while true loop. This is a continuous loop. So I'm reading my ADC value, and I'm converting it into temperature. Now this value here in the data sheet said 27, but the readings were way too low. The temperature readings were way too low, so I don't know if it was a if it was a misprint, so I changed it to 37 and that brought it up to normal, my ambient room temperature. So we take that temperature now and we feed it to the UART and that's going to write it out to the LoRa radio. And that does that every three seconds. And the LED comes on every time it transmits. So we'll have a look at the setup on my bench and we'll see how we're sending the temperature data over the LoRa radio link. Okay, I have my Pico powered up running its program where it's taking the temperature data and it's sending it to the LoRa radio module and it's transmitting it out with the antenna. I have a field strength meter up and running. You can see the LEDs come on every time it transmits. That's the temperature data being transmitted over the air. So next we'll get a receiver. I'll set up a LoRa radio receiver. We'll have a look at the data that's being transmitted from the Pico microcontroller. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer and it's connected to my LoRa radio module receiver and you can see I'm getting my temperature data being sent from the transmitter and there's my temperature values. Now I have some cold spray. I'll spray it with some cold spray and we'll see the temperature change.
So she's dropped down, and then now she starts warming up. Now there's two figures after the decimal point. Now originally there was six figures after the decimal point, so I rounded it off. It didn't need uh, six figures after the decimal point. It's not practical. So now she's starting to warm up, and she'll come back up to room temperature. So that's a little program, which is taking, taking the temperature sensor reading off the chip, off the Pico, and transmitting over the LoRa radio link to our receiver, and I'm receiving it on TerraTerm, which is a serial terminal program. Okay, so that's my little demo on the Raspberry Pi Pico. And I could see SparkFun and Adafruit and even Arduino coming up with their own boards incorporating this microcontroller. It'd be good for students for learning in school because when you write a program, you could store it on the flash drive. It has its own file system. Then when you get to school, you just download it back into the microcontroller and away you go. Similar to Microbit, I could see it being used like Microbit. They use that in schools. Now myself, I have three microcontrollers that I know very well, and those are the ones I use depending on the application. I have the Atmega 328P microcontroller, which is on the Nano, the Uno, the Pro Mini, the Pro Micro, and even the Atmega Mega 2560. It has the same core. So I use that for all my medium projects, and if I need anything more than that, I go into the Black Pill, which is an ARM microcontroller, an STM32F411. And then I have my Parallax propeller, either P1 or P2. So those are my three that I'm using. But you can make up your mind now if you want to spend the time and learn the Pico microcontroller and put that into your uh, list of microcontrollers for your projects.